Quantum physics is the most modern and innovative form of physics we know today. Scientists are using these theories to break new ground and explore the edges of our scientific understandings. Quantum physics goes beyond the conventional Newtonian physics of the past and attempts to explain the behavior of particles like electrons, protons, and neutrons. In fact, quantum physics even describes smaller particles which make up these particles. Comprehending atoms on such a finite level is helping us understand the matter which makes up the universe, the way it behaves, and sometimes misbehaves. Obviously terms like string theory, subatomic particles, and quantum mechanics can be confusing and intimidating. But the basic formations of quantum theory should not be daunting. Models and theories of quantum physics can be found and explained in our day-to-day -day lives. In fact, relations on the quantum level surround us everywhere and explain the world in which we live. However, quantum theory may not be as new and innovative as one might think. Although terminology and applications have changed, basic concepts of quantum physics correlates to hypotheses, practices, and religions of ancient times. Actually, many of our New Age scientific thought relate back to the ancient religions like Buddhism. One can see important similarities between quantum theory and Buddhism in quantum sunyata, relative theory, and propitya samipada, and string theory. To get better understanding of these relationships between the recent scientific discoveries of quantum physics and the ancient practices of Buddhism, one must first have a handle on the basic foundations of quantum theory and string theory. This is not a complete scientific breakdown of the intricacies of quantum theory, but rather this is an attempt to broadly explain, on a basic level, the fundamental outcomes of quantum physics. After giving a basic overview of these fields, I'll explore the intriguing connections between quantum theory and Buddhism. To fully comprehend the field of quantum theory, one must look into the history and the early stages of development. Quantum theory replaced classical mechanics and electromagnetism and explained physics at the atomic and subatomic levels. This theory further explained the four unknowns that classical physics could not explain. Quantization of physical qualities, wave-particle duality, uncertainty principle, and quantum entanglement. Paired with Einstein's general relativity, quantum mechanics is one of the modern pillars of physics. The theory developed from the work of not one, but many scientists in the first half of the century. Some of these scientists include Warner Weisenberg, Max Planck, Louis Broglie, Niels Bohr, Owen Schrodinger, Max Born, Paul Dirac, Albert Einstein, and many more. Initially, quantum physics was used to explain the atom and the varying light spectrum atoms admitted. Then, in 1900, Max Planck hypothesized a formula where this light and energy could be divided into smaller numbers of energy elements, such that these energy elements is proportional to the frequency that they radiate energy. Quantum theory relies on the complicated mass of formulas, mathematics, and conceptual physics. One does not need to divulge in the details of these matters to get a basic understanding of quantum theory. Quantum theory provides a more accurate and precise description on the atomic and subatomic levels that classical theory simply cannot explain. The system or theory arose from the need to understand material and behavior on the atomic scales are smaller. Quantum theory is derived from the Latin term quantus, which means how much, specifically how much energy in an atom at rest. Quantum mechanics often relies on probabilities and not exact measurements. This is based off the assumption that the universe itself is probabilistic rather than deterministic. In fact, Einstein, an important contributor to quantum theory, struggled with the loss of determinism in measurement. This led him to the famous quote, God does not play dice with the universe. Scientists were able to use complex wave functions to determine the probability of finding an electron in a particular region around a nucleus at a particular time. This probable region is often called the cloud. Basically, what quantum theory says is particles are empty of inherent existence and exist only as undefined states of potentials. Today, quantum theory has been applied to many areas of medicine, science, and technology. This is important to the field because with greater understanding of these theories, scientists are able to apply the theory with the more practical and less conceptual areas. For example, quantum mechanics is important to the field of chemistry. Scientists are now able to understand how individual atoms combine on the small atomic scale to form chemicals or molecules. This field is called quantum chemistry. Another example of the modern use of quantum theory can be found in a variety of applications in technology. Instruments like lasers, transistors, electron microscopes, or magnetic resonance imaging are developed and understood using the theory. Now it is possible for technology to operate on a scale where minuscule quantum effects are significant. 
It is obvious that quantum theory is an important step in the scientific community, but what does it mean to an average person like you and I? Where do we see the benefits, or understand the universe on a quantum level? In our lives, it is easy and natural to think of everything that we see as having a definite position, a momentum, and an exact time of occurrence. However, as stated earlier, quantum theory does not assume this exact position. Momentum, or time of objects, we see every day. More specifically, the theory analyzes the particles which make up these objects. Quantum theory provides a range of probabilities to where these particles may be. For example, imagine that you are looking at your favorite Buddhism text at your desk. You see it as a stable, non-moving object, but in fact, on a subatomic level, your textbook is in constant motion, changing at every moment. As an extension of the modern quantum theory, string theory completes the history and brings us to the current stages of quantum physics. String theory was originally developed and explored during the late 1960s and early 1970s. String theory was first applied to the behavior of hardens and subatomic particles, which could experience a strong nuclear force. In the mid-1970s, scientists found that the same mathematical formulas can be used to describe the theory of quantum gravity. The major link and contribution of string theory came in 1986, when physicists realized that string theory could describe all elementary particles. This was a major accomplishment because it unified theories of physics. String theory differs from and helps complete parts of quantum theory. Although the specifics are more complicated than quantum physics, one can get a basic understanding of string theory. The theory states that everything in the universe is made up of small strands of energy called strings. These strings vibrate at certain specific frequencies. Particles appear to change because each state of vibration can be a different particle. Each string can vibrate in many different nodes, similar to a guitar string that can produce different natural harmonic notes. The different nodes, each corresponding to different kinds of particles, make up a complex theory. Using string theory, scientists hope to create a logical and consistent theory of quantum gravity. String theory differs from quantum theory because it attempts to remove the assumption that particles are point-like. By making particles strings, particles should be thought of as tiny vibrating objects. These strings are on an extremely small scale. Some theorists estimate that the length to be 10 to the negative 35th power. Strings are measured in lengths of planks. These units are so short that if a hydrogen atom was the size of the known universe, a plank length would be no longer than a mature oak tree. String theory is thought to include some 10, 11, or 26 dimensions. As stated before, one can see many similarities between the new complex premises of quantum theory and the hypotheses, practices, and religions of ancient times. After having a basic knowledge of quantum theory, one can see the correlations between new science and the ancient practice. Quantum theory and Buddhism make important intersections in quantum sunyata, relative theory, and prapracha samapada of string theory. The first similarity between Buddhism and quantum theory can also be called quantum sunyata. To understand the similarity, one must first understand the Buddhism explanation of sunyata. In the basic sense, sunyata means emptiness. However, the English word emptiness is a more nihilistic connotation than the original Sanskrit. This term is a phenomenon in the mode of perception. Relating to the Buddhist attempt to renounce all views, one does not have their own perceptions or own nature. This is because everything must appear only in dependence of our minds and perceptions. Therefore, it is not an obvious truth. Further, this is the belief that there is no self or anything pertaining to self. All things are totally empty in any defining essence. Therefore, all things have no fixed identity and are in a state of impermanence, change and flux, constantly becoming and decaying. Not only are all things constantly changing, but if we analyze any phenomenon in enough detail, we come to the conclusion that it is ultimately indefiable and exists purely as definitions in the terms of other things. And one of those, the other things, will always in the mind which generates those definitions. These beliefs serve as the major schools of Manihata Buddhism. Before making the connection between science and Buddhism, one must remember a few key points of quantum theory. It is important to reiterate that scientists analyze clouds around the nucleus. This is determined by the probability of finding an electron in a particular region around the nucleus at a particular time. This is significant because the key connection between these seemingly different worlds is that particles are empty of inherent existence and exist only as undefined states of potentials. Comprehending these points, one can understand the vast connections that create quantum sunyata. First, no particles have fixed identity. Therefore, nothing in the universe has a fixed identity. 
Second, if particles only exist as potential states, one cannot assume anything to become real. 